Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Tensions definitely must be high, even though there's been some diplomatic uh, speaking going on between Russia and uh, the United States. John Kerry, at the invitation of Russia, actually came and spoke with Vladimir Putin just recently, the president of Russia, uh, and spoke with uh, Russia's uh, defense minister, uh, before speaking with the president just recently over the situation in Ukraine and how to, uh, well, doesn't actually say how to settle the crisis, but yet what their contacts are saying, that is the United States contacts are saying, that needed to be uh, reiterated back to Russia. Let me share with you a little bit of this uh, this particular uh, article here from TASS, it says President Vladimir Putin is holding a meeting with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry at the Bo uh, Bokhrov uh, Ruchai residence. This is Putin's first meeting with a senior U.S. official since cooling of relations over Ukraine, uh, the Ukrainian crisis. Kerry arrived at Bokhrov uh, Ruchai uh, after talks with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei La uh, Lavrov and the president, pre, uh, press secretary, uh, Dmitry uh, Piskov, earlier said the diplomats would brief Putin on the results of their contacts. That's the part I was interested in right there, that he said that they would brief Putin on the, uh, on the results of their contacts. Uh, uh, Peskov said uh, the Kremlin had welcomed Kerry's decision to visit Russia because that would uh, contribute to the dialogue and the uh, progress towards the normalization uh, of relations and tight coordination in the international, on international issues. It is very positive the U.S. Secretary of State made the decision to hold contacts with Russia, the counterpart uh, said. This is a positive development in itself because we have stated more than once at various levels, uh, the President said this too, that Russia has never been the initiator of a cool-off in relations. We have always remained open to manifestations of political will to have a wider dialogue. And that's something that we've noticed as well in following all of this. Russia has really kind of tried to refrain from what we can tell in, in all these issues here, whereas the West has been more of the aggressor in, in this particular case. Um, now, a, another article, though, that TASS has brought out that really concerns me is this one here where it says, Russia's airborne troops alerted within post-Soviet security block drill. Now, that's the headline of the article. And what this is, is that Russia is bringing up uh, some of their uh, airborne divisions uh, they've been alerted the framework of the inspection of combat readiness for the contingents of a collective rapid reaction force uh, of the security treaty organization, Russia's defense ministry told TASS on Tuesday. Uh, they're actually arming full combat ready, all weather gear, everything, uh, and they're doing this right, uh, right along the former Soviet bloc there. Now, as we learned from watching Russia's... Uh, documentary, The Way Home, Russia showed how that when the U.S. called, uh, uh, what would you call, the, the drills that they were doing in the Black Sea, that they weren't drills in effect at all. They were actually aggressive actions where the U.S. and NATO allies were planning on taking Crimea away from Russia. But of course, they had not expected that Russia would have the supersonic missiles that they could not stop in place before they would try to do this. And once they saw those in the satellite view, Russia made it quite clear and obvious they would use them, which would sink every one of the ships that NATO had right there in the Black Sea. And of course, the world had no idea that this was not drills, this was a standoff, and very serious standoff. Russia also was speaking at the time uh, President Putin said in the film he was ready to use nuclear force if necessary as well. So it's, it's more than just a cooling of relationships. These, this particular relationship between the West and Russia has become very cold. And they, Russia has reached out many times trying to get the U.S. to, to come in, broker a deal. And then when, of course, the Minsk deal was reached, uh, Russia was expecting NATO to honor their agreement that they would allow the people, uh, the, the, the self-proclaimed uh, Donetsk region's uh, republic to actually do a, basically like a two-state solution for them, breaking the country in half. 
uh, but that has not been held. And of course, Poroshenko is clearly uh, the current president uh, that's of Ukraine is determined to take uh, the East as well as Crimea back, and they do not care, and he's rearming, he's made it quite clear, he's rearming while everything's quiet, and they have already started is, uh, doing their own combat training with uh, NATO forces, helping them out, uh, and we've, we've discovered this is already causing loss of life. Just training is getting people killed in the East uh, of Ukraine. So this is about to either spiral out of control or it's about to come to a, an agreement somehow. So it is good to see that there is some diplomatic uh, correspondence going on here. It's just a matter to see uh, if they're going to end up going into an all-blown-out war. We know that uh, we he were here in May. This is the time they said that Russia was going to invade uh, as far as into Ukraine, according to the uh, reports from the, from the United States. Uh, we have not seen that take place as of yet. And uh, so I think that they're trying to come up with an agreement before they end up in an all-out conflict, which, which could certainly spiral out of control and bring about a third world war. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live. Shalom. Tough.